Hello members and welcome back to another segment of In the Know with Joe the Pro. Here we are on Lewis and Clark number three with the uh, posting season uh, coming up fast upon us this Friday. You can start posting scores. And when I say you can, we'd like you to start posting all your scores. So that's March 1st. Uh, we thought it'd be nice to talk about some of the uh, different rule situations that you're gonna run into out there. Hopefully not too often, like out of bounds, red penalty areas, yellow penalty areas, things like that. So starting off with out of bounds, uh, to the left of the fairway is out of bounds on number three on Lewis and Clark, and it is uh, noted by white fence, also white posts uh, note the out of bounds. And obviously you are welcome to hit another tee shot if you think your golf ball might be out of bounds, but I think a better alternative is to use the stroke and distance rule. Now, some of the rules that we're about to talk, talk to you about are on the back of the scorecard. So if you happen to be playing with one of those people that know all of the rules of golf, by the way, I'm not one of them because I don't know all the rules of golf. I like to look things up. You can always fall back on the scorecard. It talks about what I'm about to tell you right now. So you hit a ball out of bounds. You're not sure it's out of bounds. You get up here and you see that it is on the other side of the fence. Well, what you are welcome to do is to come here into the fairway and you can take two club lengths, drop a ball from knee height and go ahead and hit. Now, it's not that friendly of a rule because you have to add two strokes to your score. So you're hitting four. Now, if you hit a provisional off the tee, if you thought your ball might be out of bounds, you would be laying wherever you hit that ball, laying three and hitting four. So in this particular case, obviously it speeds up play and you're getting a very nice uh, position to hit from. Now you can guesstimate it how far you think that was if you don't find your golf ball where you think it might have crossed the fence. But if you can see the ball and you want to be a real stickler for the rules of golf, you can take your range finder and see how far you are from where your golf ball is sitting out of bounds. Let's say I'm 175 yards. Then you can come here to the fairway and check it out at 175 yards and then you're going to have the exact distance. But that's really not that necessary. Again, you're going to be hitting four and probably not making a score that you want on this hole. But I did want you to know about the stroke and distance rule. And if you need any additional information, please talk to me in the golf shop. I'm happy to tell you how that all works out. This also works for a lost ball. So on number three also on Lewis and Clark, if you hit it out there to the right and you know it's not in the red penalty area and you don't find your golf ball, you can go to the fairway there too. Again, adding two strokes and hitting from there. Now there's also uh, red penalty areas and yellow penalty areas. We're very unique out here at uh, St. Albans in that the only yellow penalty areas that are marked actually have yellow stakes there. Nothing else has red uh, stakes on it. It's not entirely true. There maybe is one hole that might have a few red stakes, uh, number two on Tavern Creek. But we, what I want you to understand, I'm gonna just read this for you. Red stakes have been removed from all the golf courses. However, native grass areas, woods inside the course boundaries, are, and water features are all deemed to be red stake penalty areas. All right? So you will not see red stakes to the right of the fairway on number two on Lewis, even though there's a big lake there. But obviously that's a red penalty area. You will not see red stakes here on number three where there's a little small creek, but that is a red penalty area. Also the brush or the native grasses to the right of the green on number three on Lewis. There's no red stakes there, but it is a red stake penalty area. Where you drop is where you think the ball entered this area two club lengths, add a stroke, and you hit from there. All right, again, I'm happy to go over all these for you uh, to help you out. Uh, the next thing we're gonna talk about is our unique uh, sprinkler head rule. Jessica and I are gonna go up to number two green and show you that. All right, here we are at number two on Lewis and Clark, and Jessica is standing right between uh, my golf ball and the flag, so you can clearly see, hopefully, that there's two sprinkler heads in my way. Now the rule two years ago used to be, if you were hoping to putt this ball, uh, sorry, so sad, you're not gonna be able to do that. You're gonna have to step up here and uh, go ahead and chip it. And I like to putt whenever I can, just because my misses are gonna be a lot better. 
Well, we changed this rule a uh, little over a year ago and updated from the scorecard again, the way it says uh, how you can handle this. So greenside sprinkler heads. If a sprinkler head within two club lengths of the green is on your line of play and your ball is within two club lengths of that sprinkler head, one club length relief can be taken, all right? And you must keep it in the same condition. Now, I want you to hear that again. This is an and, 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 all right? So first off, the sprinkler head is within two club lengths of the green. So clearly, that is that way. And my ball is within two club lengths of the sprinkler head. And the sprinkler heads are on my line to the hole. What you then get to do is move your ball to the left or right nearest point where you're not having to putt over those sprinkler heads. So this would be it. We're gonna drop the ball. Okay, it's gonna roll a little bit too far and it's actually back in my way. We're gonna drop it again. Okay, and now I can go ahead and play. Now, I, I also mentioned in there that you must keep it in the same condition. And the reason for that is just on the other side of the green, there's also a sprinkler head within two club lengths of the green and the sprinkler head is within six inches of the rough. So if my ball was in the rough and I didn't want to chip through that sprinkler head, I can go ahead and move left or right, but I have to drop it in the rough. All right, so this is a very friendly rule, something I'm sure all of you will utilize in the near future. Future, And if you have any problem understanding the scenario that gets you this kind of a relief, please go ahead and uh, talk to me in the golf shop. I'm happy to help you. Sometimes the rules of golf help us. And actually with that provisional ball rule, we don't want you really necessarily having to hit provisional balls, keep the pace of play going. So uh, again, I hope you enjoyed this in the no segment. The rules of golf are very difficult and be careful about answering any rules of golf questions without looking them up first. Thank you and I uh, look forward to talking to you uh, in a couple of weeks.